Our first prelude this morning will be What Child Is This and Child of the Poor Medley. You'll find What Child Is This on page 145 in your St. Augustine hymnal.
next prelude is in your additional music guide on page six.
Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Today we're celebrating the solemnity of Mary, the mother of God. The readings are on page 825, if you'd like to use a ribbon to mark that page. 825. Our opening hymn is number 144, and we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. It is said that if we were to look at this new year with anything other than hope, it would not be from God. But we are human beings, and sometimes we have uh, worries, anxiety, stress. There's times we simply do not trust God in our lives. For the times that we've done that, for the times we've sinned, we now ask him for his mercy. Mm -hmm. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of Blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how we shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. But in addition to all of our celebrations for our new year and for our blessed mother, we also have a couple of our children here making their first communion. Actually, just the way it turned out at the 8 o'clock, the 10 o'clock, and the 12 o'clock mass, we have kids making their first communions. And so it's a great day for that. Um, one of the families has a family friend, one of our priests here in our diocese, Father Ben Bray. So he's joining the family. Uh, he would be up here with me, but I think he was wrestling or taekwondo, I don't know, something, but he got injured. So he's, I think he's hobbling around a little bit right now. So, so welcome, Father Ben. I knew him when he was a teenager. I was at his parish for a little while. So if you ever want any stories about Father Ben, I can, I'll share them for a fee. Yeah, all right. I should have known. <clears throat> so as we look at the new year and we really just look at how much our world has changed. For those who are a little bit older, you can reflect on decades, right? 
And so often, when people look at how life used to be, yes, there are things that are better. There are, right? Technology has improved many things about how we as human beings can live together in community. Uh, but there's a lot of things that have happened that even with technology, the opposite happened, right? Uh, I, I, I'll never forget talking to my grandma and grandpa just about how they would say that they never locked their doors, that they never locked, never even thought that somebody would steal their car, right? Things like that, and it's just such a completely different world now. It, it just feels like something went wrong, right? So not that long ago down in Florida, they had one of the most destructive hurricanes that they've had. Actually, they had several hurricanes go through. And, and if you were to walk around or if you were to watch the, the video footage of especially that one island that got hit really hard, it just, it's just the disaster of it. You say something went wrong here, right? The storm hit and destroyed everything. We cannot just hide or ignore the fact that spiritually speaking, and I would even say emotionally speaking and psychologically speaking, it's like we've been through a hurricane for the last couple decades. And we're all trying to pretend that it's not as bad as it is. But as we look at the new, new year, I think as Christians, we must be able to look at the world we live in and say, all right, what is God doing and how does he want us to be part of his plan to, to rebuild, right? There's places, I know places in Louisiana, they still haven't rebuilt from years ago. Is that what we want? Is that what it means for us in our community, spiritually speaking? Now, a couple concepts or a couple ideas on this. If you ever want an answer to something these days, all you have to do is pull out your phone. You just have to Google it and you'll get the answer. More than likely, you'll find the right answer. Maybe, maybe not. But the internet has so much information. So the other day, I was giving in to a little temptation. Every once in a while, this happens to me because I love animals. I love, I've always loved pets. I started thinking about getting a pet. It was a moment of weakness because as pastors, we don't, we're not good pet take keepers, you know, we're just too busy. So I started looking for someone who could refer or give an idea of a pet that requires no work at all. <laughs> and the first one was a pet rock. <laughs> now, I, you, you guys are so on it. After the last mass, somebody already brought me a pet rock, okay? So I was like, no, I, I don't want a rock. I got plenty of rocks. Um, so this person that I was looking at had these ideas, and I wasn't liking any of them. And when it got to the cockroach, I was like, I don't need a pet. But he was so excited about the idea of a cockroach. He even had places where you can buy them, right? And he had some video of his daughter with her pet cockroach crawling on her arm. And I was like, no, 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 we're not doing that. The one that intrigued me a little bit, so don't be surprised, was the tarantula. It intrigued me just a little bit because I don't like spiders, but I figured maybe I can get over them. Now, as I was looking at this, as I was wasting time, I was looking at this, I came across one gentleman who loves snakes, absolutely loves snakes, right? And he has poisonous snakes. And so there's this one point where he's holding, I think it was a cobra, I think he has a pet cobra. He's holding this cobra and he's cooing and he's like, oh, you're so beautiful, you're so beautiful, I love you, right? And this snake is trying to eat him, is trying to kill him, it wants to bite him in the face. So the internet can present some things that are a little crazy. But in God's defense, I want to say, some of God's ideas are pretty crazy. Today we have Mary pondering. She's reflecting in her heart. Now, when do we reflect on things in our heart? When our brain is, is struggling to comprehend what is happening. But for Mary, the, the, the shepherds come to her and they're describing what has happened. She has no words. 
it's absolute craziness in a sense of what's happening. And so she's pondering and reflecting and she's just taking it in. I think there's something so important for us as Christians to really be able to look at our world and to take in what's happening, to not just hide from it or run away from it, but to take it in, but especially what God is doing. Now, talking about craziness. So when I was younger, me and my brother Joe, we were, always, we were closest in age. This is how our relationship was. I would say, hey, Joe, let's climb up on the roof and jump off. That, wouldn't that be fun? That's how my mind worked. And his was, that's just one of your dumb ideas. Let's do something normal. And that was how his brain worked. And so we balance each other out. I got him in trouble sometimes, and he got me out of it. My mind has always had lots of ideas, and some of them are not very good. But some, even as crazy as they are, sometimes work. Jesus coming to us in a stable, that's insanity. Why would God even think of doing that? Because his heart is full of humility and love. He knows what we need, right? Where do we look for innocence? Where do we look for to become humble, to, to find peacefulness, right? It was God's crazy idea that the king of the universe is going to come to us in a stable. And if that isn't enough to ponder for a lifetime, then let's just fast forward to the end, where God's idea is, I'm going to surrender my son to them, and they're going to kill him. Them being us. What a crazy idea. Why would any father do that? Because he's madly in love with us, right? It's kind of like the guy with the cobra. He loves this snake. And the snake wants to kill him. Well, you know, it's really not too far off sometimes of us as humanity and how we treat each other, but even how we treat God. So the first step, I think, for this new year, and it's not that we do them incrementally or chronologically. We can do them kind of all at once. But one of the things we have to do is to ponder, to ponder deeply what God is doing. Because he will surprise you when you can see God's mind at work. His ideas will be a little crazy sometimes, but it's because he loves us so much. And so there lies the first, the first thought for you for this new year is the ability to spend time pondering God's mind in his heart and what he's doing. Now, Mary had 30 years to ponder things before reality sets in and the world turns on her son, right? And then everything kind of goes really fast. So up here in our deanery, as pastors, we take turn taking hospital calls from the hospital in Everett from Providence. And so December was my month, and so I'm, I've been answering emergency calls for December. Uh, so one night I go through, and I'm passing through by the emergency room, and it's really quiet, right? At the last mass I said it was dead. That's not the right word for emergency room. It was really quiet. There weren't very many people there. Everything seemed kind of nice and calm. But Friday night I got called back, and it was not calm. It was like they were in triage mode. There were people everywhere. They, were, they had them in the, the waiting rooms areas, and... Any place you could fit a person, they had them there. And I'm hearing from the chaplain, that's actually something happening much too regularly. But the, the impression I got walking through was, it's like, was there a disaster somewhere? Did a tornado hit or a hurricane? Because that was, that's what it felt like walking through the emergency room. And, and you know they're doing their best. They're just trying to um, uh, do what they can do. But it felt like there was just something off in terms of the community. It's like there wasn't enough room for everybody. I guess Jesus can relate to that, right? And so when we ponder what God is doing, we cannot escape the fact that spiritually speaking, 
It's like we've just been hit by a hurricane. Um, the hospital helps people with physical ailments, but there is nobody helping people with spiritual ailments or even the emotional and psychological. I shouldn't say nobody, but we're not equipped. And so it's like the people down in Florida who just stand and look at the destruction and not even know where to start. You can't use a broom. A broom's not going to help. Not even a shovel's going to help just the level of destruction. Now, I was reading something about, I don't remember the name of the island down there that got hit recently, but it, it knocked out the causeway, it knocked out the bridges that connect the island to the mainland. And so they were having these conversations and, and the engineers are evaluating it and they're saying, yeah, this will take a couple years to fix. Because that's what it would in normal circumstances. We don't live in normal circumstances. As Catholics, we can't just hope that the world goes back to normal. We're dying spiritually. And so the leaders went to these engineers and said, you don't have a couple years, you have three months. And they're like, and this is what engineers do, that's not possible. Because in normal times it wouldn't be. And so as we look at ourselves as, as Catholics, as Christians, spiritually speaking, seeing the devastation around us, seeing how we're changing in not good ways, we don't have 30 years to wait, to ponder. The devastation is here and now, and it's impacting your families, my family, and all of us. And so the pondering, yes, but God's already got a plan going. We don't have to come up with a plan he has it. We just have to be on board with it. So the engineers, after being instructed by the leadership, came up with a plan, and they got that causeway fixed, and it's already up and running. So good leadership helps make that happen. A couple thoughts on just how we approach this also. So when we have devastation, when we have problems in our world, it's so tempting to become angry, right? And then we get kind of stuck in that anger. I've been reading a book with a couple of our parishioners who are in the, in the civic government, and we've been discussing some things based on their job and their role in the community. And one of the things the author says, he says, we're, we're deeply confused as people in our relationships. Because what we do is we look at a person and we don't decide whether we like them or not until we hear their opinions on things. Then we decide if we like them or not. And so what we've confused is the dignity of a human person and whether they're worthy of our love with their opinions and whether they're worthy of our love or respect. The reality is we all have different opinions and some of them are good and some of them are as bad as they get. I have bad opinions a lot of times too. My hope would be that somebody wouldn't hate me just because every once in a while I have a bad opinion of something. We must love people based on their dignity and because they are a son or daughter of God, not on their opinions. And so this pulls us out of a shallow, uh, pride-filled community where we're all kind of judging each other, pigeonholing each other. It's like, you know what? That person, they're in my snake category, right? Or they're in my cockroach category. I'm not going to be around that person if I don't have to be. Okay, that's, there's shallowness in that. Humility is when I just default, I just love a person because they are who God created them to be. And then I'll decide whether or not I agree with some of their opinions. But the love is deeper, and so we can disagree and still love each other, all right? We can also talk about our ideas and our opinions. We can also talk about God's teachings without getting all offended. And we can ponder, too, when we have that kind of humility, we can ponder what God is doing. We can ponder what the church says on something, especially when we feel like we disagree with it. And so the path of humility. 
Now, to get back to the anger movement, because I think a lot of people are struggling with anger these days, and so as we get into the new year, that's not necessarily a good thing to have. Yes, sometimes God will work with our anger, but I would also say don't trust your anger. Don't let it be your, your God, if you will, about how we respond to things. We can't trust our anger because Satan, he can work on it so easy. He can turn it with our pride. So be very careful about trust. When you feel anger in your heart, be very careful about trusting the anger. Every once in a while, when I get frustrated, like, let's say I'm looking for the ladder, right? And the ladder is not where it's supposed to be. So I have a tendency to begin to blame. It's like, who moved the ladder, right? Well, 99% of the time, it's right where I left it. So my perspective, my anger, when I start blaming, it's pride. It's just pride at work. To be very, very careful about blaming people. Because when Jesus came into the world, he didn't come to crucify us. He did it very differently. He's courageous. He will not back down. He will proclaim the truth no matter what. But he also loves us. So be very careful with those things that tend to destroy the intrinsic love that God wants us to have. Now my last thought on this, a couple weeks ago I was giving a couple homilies where I referred to the Lord of the Rings, the stories by Tolkien. And I've never read the books per se, so a parishioner bought me all of his books. It was like a box came to me of all these books. And I was very, very grateful and I quickly pushed it off to the side. Because I have a lot of things to read, but I'm just not a fiction reader. Well, last night, I was actually getting bed to early last night, and I looked at the box, and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll try one of them, all right? I'm already forgetting the name of it. It's not one of his really famous works, I can't, and I can't pronounce the name Similarion or something like that. Anyways, does somebody know the name of it? Yes, that name, okay? I'll work on it. But anyways, so I get a couple pages in, and it's like, oh, I'm not going to bed early tonight. So just to give you a sense of Tolkien's mind and how he kind of pulls some of this together. So the first character really is, is like God the Father. It's just this, this character who uh, really captures the one who creates everything. But what's really interesting is that all of creation in this first part of the story is like a symphony. He's the conductor. And so all these other angelic-like creatures, they all work together to create the most beautiful music in the world. And nobody even thinks about doing anything other than helping that music be beautiful. And so it's interesting in the Bible how the angels have the choir of angels, and they have their trumpets and these instruments, right? And so in heaven, they create this most beautiful music. Well, there's one other angel who's wandering, and he wanders off, and he finds a place with silence, and so he begins to decide to create his own music. And the music is horrible. And I think of sometimes the music that I listened to as a teenager, and that was instantly the thought that came to my music. There's just this cacophony. It's, it just doesn't sound like it's something from God. It sounds like it's just, well, anyways, it doesn't sound like it's from God. So this angel brings it back thinking he's created something so great and so wonderful. And everybody's looking at him like, what are you doing? It's horrible music. Right? But what does God do? God, in orchestrating the, the symphony, changes the music to pull in this cacophony and then takes it and turns it into something beautiful. And it's just a simple, simple lesson that when God is at work, he will take anything and transform it into something beautiful. I think it's a great way for us to begin this new year. Very, very hope-filled. Ponder absolutely 
But we also have to face reality. Our world needs Christians. It needs Catholics. It needs people who are willing to bring this symphony and God's grace into the world. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, beyond not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is a daughter and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The Mother of God is Mary's greatest title. In humility and faithfulness, she gave birth to her Son, the eternal Son of God, in the Word made flesh. Let us join her as we come to the Father in prayer. For the Church, reflected in Mary, that we may faithfully bring forth Jesus Christ in our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples under Mary's care, that in coming year they may know peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the persecuted and abandoned ones, that they may be consoled by our mother's powerful protection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all families celebrating a new year, that they may share the happiness of the family of Nazareth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the departed, that God may grant them peace, especially for eternal rest of Pope Benedict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in the Ukraine and all places experiencing strife and war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hear the prayers of your people gathered to honor the most holy mother of your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is in your additional music guide on page three.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially remember Pope Benedict, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we pray as Jesus taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from the Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of our Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. For those of you who are unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, we offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. body of Christ the body of Christ the blood of Christ the blood of Christ body of Christ the blood of Christ Our communion hymn is a medley of Night of Silence and Silent Night. You'll find Silent Night on 148. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, mother of your Son and mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. This is First Friday coming up, and so we have Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament all day. Please feel free to come and join us for that time in prayer. Also, because of that, I also have confessions from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Friday. And we have, and I'm sorry, I forgot to announce this at the last Mass, we have children's adoration from 3 to 4 p.m. on Friday. So anyone with children like to come and be part of that. Uh, we celebrate the Santo Nino Mass here as part of the Catholic Filipino culture. Also, Hispanics join in in that culture also, or that celebration. That will be Saturday, January 14th at our 9 a.m. Mass. Uh, they're doing a novena, which will be every day starting January 6th at 5 p.m. in our Adoration Chapel over in the office building. Uh, and that's in the, in the bulletin, or at least it should be. Um, the office will reopen on Tuesday, and uh, for those who are interested, you probably know more about this than I do, but um, the funeral for Pope Benedict, I believe, is on Thursday, but you have to check. There's a nine-hour difference, so you have to check to see when that is if you'd like to watch the funeral in the Vatican uh, at St. Peter's for Pope Benedict. Um, also, if you're looking for something to do for the new year for, this, for faith, Father Mike Schmitz is doing his catechism, uh, in, catechism through the year uh, podcast. And so you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Apple Podcasts and other places. You know, a lot of us feel really intimidated by going through the catechism. And so this might be a really great way to have somebody just kind of walk you through it through the course of the year. So every day, he's going to, have, uh, he's going to do some readings from it and little reflections on it. Uh, if you have absolutely nothing to do and you're bored out of your mind on Wednesday night, some parishioners, against my better advice, decided to have a party here. It's somebody's birthday, unfortunately. <laughs> So if you'd like to come to a birthday party for me, um, it's Wednesday It's Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, for that reason, I have no confessions on Wednesday night. It is a potluck, so um, you can bring, it says bring your favorite dish. Uh, there is cake after mass to celebrate and to congratulate our three here who just received their first communion. So why don't we... What a great way to start the new year, right? Okay. Yes. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Our sending forth hymn is number 159, verses 1, 2, and 4.